I can't decide which is more fun to talk about, a rookie's first NHL goal or a fight that takes down Zach Cassian. Slavkovsky and Jack Eye stole the show. Hey friends, welcome back to this week's episode of Habs Hockey Report right here on the All Habs Hockey Magazine YouTube channel. So glad that you are back with us this week for what's going to be, I think, a very fun show today. Uh, If you're new here, my name is Amy Johnson. I'm your host of the show. I'm also the lead correspondent at our Habs Prospect and Laval Rocket-focused website, AHLReport.com, bringing you credentialed coverage of the Laval Rocket and Habs prospects all season long. So be sure you bookmark allhabs.net, AHLReport.com. Follow us on Twitter, at AllHabs. And hey, while you're at it, just hit that subscribe button down below. Tap the notification bell. We don't want you to miss a single episode of Habs Hockey Report. And today, boy, let me tell you, we're going to have some fun talking about uh, Thursday night's game against the Arizona Coyotes. We're also going to talk about the reverse retro reveals that came out this week, as well as some other uh, Habs and Laval Rocket related news. Uh, first, want to say a hello to Manny O, who wrote in and said that he was watching from Newfoundland. Welcome. Uh, we always love to hear from folks out on the rock uh, and uh, we'd love to know where you're watching from Uh, if you've not told us before where you're watching Habs Hockey Report from just drop a comment down below and let us know how far and wide our audience is reaching Um, also start thinking about how you feel about those reverse retros because I can guarantee you that this week's feedback forum question is going to be related to that because believe you me Everybody's got opinions on it, and we're going to want to hear about it. So let's get started with some Habs happenings. You know, the Habs regular season really kind of kicked off without a minute to take a breath. I mean, they opened the season uh, last Wednesday against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Then they traveled to Detroit and Washington for a Friday-Saturday a uh, back-to-back set of games, came back to Montreal and then played on Monday night against the Pittsburgh Penguins. I mean, that's that's four that's four games in six days. That's that's an awful lot. <laughs> um, and it was a busy it was a busy period. Um, didn't look so great, uh, perhaps on the road, but they're doing pretty okay in front of their uh, very enthusiastic fans in the Bell Center. Um, And a couple of guys, even even on the nights that the Habs have struggled, uh, we have seen some positive things from the younger guys and the prospects, which is the whole point of this season, really. One in particular, a Mr. Caden Gooley, who hasn't missed a beat. He is looking exceptionally strong. I even heard on the TSN uh, TV broadcast last night, one of the, one of the broadcasters there uh, saying something to the effect of this, this kid could be the best defenseman that the Canadians currently have in their lineup, uh, which is quite a statement to make. I mean, Caden Gooley looking very strong. He's contributing uh, on the offense, getting some points. His defense is very solid. So impressive with Caden Gooley. Uh, He is absolutely looking every bit an NHLer, and I have a feeling that's where he's going to stay for quite a bit of time. Uh, On the other side of things, Sean Monaghan, Kirby Doc, uh, they both look like they're settling into their new team environment very well. Kirby Doc, of course, coming up with that magnificent overtime winner uh, earlier this week. Uh, And so we saw Sean Monaghan had had kind of his very celebrated first goal uh, with the Canadians last week. It was Kirby Doc's turn for that this week. But really the big conversation was Thursday night's game where the Montreal Canadiens welcomed the Arizona Coyotes into the Bell Center. I mean, this is like 
tank team against tank team, right? I mean, it, it, the the whole the whole thought process going into this season was, is it going to be the Canadians and the Arizona Coyotes battling each other for who's going to for the for the Connor Bedard sweepstakes, uh, which is kind of how things went this past summer. Connor Ingram was in net for uh, Arizona, and boy. You had to feel for Connor Ingram on Thursday night because Josh Anderson got the scoring started with a pretty eh, soft dish looking goal uh, right in the opening minutes of the game. And the Canadians did not look back from there. Uh, You leave Cole Caulfield uh, all by himself with a puck in front of the net. That's going to be an easy goal for Cole Caulfield. Uh, I mean, the Bell Center was rocking second period. Sure enough. Who but Uri Slavkovsky finally buries his very first NHL goal, and that place erupted. Uh, Uri Slavkovsky, I think, uh, just completely caught up in the moment. Uh, a whole range of emotions uh, in his celebration and even back on the bench. Uh, it was very fun to see, and the fans have obviously braced, uh, embraced Slavkovsky, chanting his name after he scores that first NHL goal. It will definitely be uh, an evening that Yuri Slavkovsky won't forget. Uh, and if you check out the game recap, courtesy of Rick Stevens over at allhabs.net, he mentions that although he didn't get an official assist on the goal, it was Arbor Jacki that really helped to make that goal happen for Slavkovsky because uh, Arbor Jacki took uh, took a defender out of position very forcefully, uh, which opened up the ice a bit for Slavkovsky to get some room to to snap that puck uh, to the back of the net. Arbor Jacki, I don't, as I said at the top of the show, I don't know who was the bigger story last night. Uri Slavkovsky scoring his first NHL goal or the fact that Arbor Jacki, we know his reputation from the OHL. We know he's aggressive. We know he's a fighter. We know he's a little bit of an enforcer, a little old school. Um, I think most People, myself included, were a little surprised to see him throw down the gloves against Zach Cassian. Um, I think pretty much everyone in the league knows how tough Zach Cassian is. And as soon as you saw that the two of them were going to dance, I, I just I thought, oh, oh, oh my, oh here we go, oh, <laughs> oh okay. This, I mean, that for me it was kind of like when Pizzetta decided to go toe to toe with with Reeves last year. I I held my breath like. Oh, kid, do you know what you're getting yourself into? But Arbor Jack guy, like, destroyed him. Took him to the ice. Um, got a few really good uh, hits in, some solid hits. And didn't wait either. I mean, he actually just kind of just charged right in. There was no kind of waiting and getting set. Jack guy, as soon as he pulled the sleeves off, tossed the gloves, he charged right in at Cassian. Uh, it was a quick bout and... Uh, Wow, I think uh, I think that made some people. I, I mean, the Bell Center again went nuts about that. But I think around the league, I think some people kind of sat up and said, "Oh, okay, we knew this kid. We knew this kid likes to use his fist, and we know he likes to hit. We know he's really physical." But okay, all right, we see you, Arbor Jack guys. So uh, it was certainly it's going to be the theme this year. We've said it a few times. There will be games that will be very fun for Habs fans to watch. And last night was one of them. It was entertaining. It was fun. You could really get behind uh, the young kids and the rookies who were apparently just having the time of their life. And you know what? If if you can have some fun watching games and the kids get some experience and develop, well, then that's what we'll call a success this season. Uh, There were also other reasons to have big smiles at the Bell Center this week. Uh, They held their annual blood drive the day before the game. This is always a really uh, popular event with fans because they're able to do something good uh, and and give back to their communities a bit by donating blood. And at the same time, they get to meet some of their favorite players. Uh, And we saw guys like Jack Eye, uh, uh, Johnny Kovacevic was there, Carey Price was there, Cole Caulfield was there, uh, and a lot of the guys just looked like they were having a really good time interacting with the fans. 
But the other big news for the week was the Adidas and NHL reveal of this year's reverse retro look. We all know (laughs) that the last time they did reverse retros a few years ago, they went with that royal blue and they seem to be terribly bad luck for the Canadians because every single time, just about, that the Canadians wore those royal blue retros, um, they lost. And they, you know, the running joke was starting to be that those those jerseys were a bit of a curse. Will that be the same case this time around? As you see here on the screen, they've gone with an Expos color scheme, giving a nod, of course, to the Montreal Expos organization. So they've gone with that powder blue uh, from the Expos with the royal blue across the uh, chest stripe and the elbow stripes. It's a little, for me... It's a little bland. Um, I, I, I certainly, I acknowledge the the nod to uh, the Expos. That powder blue is obviously very recognizable and, and really uh, strikes a chord with Habs and, and Expos fans. Um, I just find, oh, it's one of those things, and I felt this way the last time they did reverse retros, that I need to see it on the ice to really kind of decide if I like it or not. In the photos and and the video, eh, it's just a little bland for me. Maybe I'll think it's different um, when I see it on the ice. Also, I've grown up in Pennsylvania. I've lived in eastern Pennsylvania my whole life, which means that I've grown up as a Flyers fan, which means I don't like the Penguins. (laughs) And so that powder blue reminds me of the old vintage Pittsburgh Penguins powders, powder blues, which kind of makes me twitchy. (laughs) Have to have to admit, uh, but uh, very fun. I you know you could see that that fans uh, either loved them or hated them. I saw a lot of people really in, really saying they liked them. Um, if you want to get one of these jerseys for any team around the league, and you want it with a specific player number on it, holy cow, are you going to pay through the nose for these things? I want to say that the Canadians. Um, the custom ones with with a player's nameplate and number on the back were somewhere north of three hundred dollars Canadian, like three thirty, three twenty nine Canadian, something like that. I mean, they're outrageously priced, and I mean, we all know that's that's kind of the point, right? It's a big, it's a big merchandise money grab uh, by the NHL, but fans get to have some fun with it. So here you see uh, all thirty two teams of the league. Um, I'd love to know, basically, my feedback forum question for you this week is, how do you feel about the Canadians' reverse retro jersey look this year? Lots, St. Louis, I think, is a really nice looking one. Uh, I think that's a really handsome one. I I always like that Minnesota goes back to the Minnesota North Stars colors. I think that's very classy. Um, Lots of, you know, (laughs) I saw a lot of people roasting the Kraken for, like, oh, reverse retro for a team that's been in the league for a year. (laughs) What are you going to do? But as I did say, I grew up my whole life as a Flyers fan. The Cooperalls are back, folks. The Cooperalls have come back. um, And this is going to definitely polarize fans around the NHL. Um, whether you're a Flyers fan or not, this is going to be a topic of conversation. The Cooperalls, of course, the Flyers brought them into the league in the early 80s. They were the only team wearing them. They are regular length pants called Cooperalls, in case you're a young viewer who's never seen these. And the Flyers wore these uh, instead of the traditional hockey pant uh, in, in the early 80s. Uh, I believe it was 81, 82. Some players, some players didn't mind them. A lot of players hated them for a lot of reasons. You hear stories of how uh, it really restricted their stride. Um, if you would, because they're nylon, when you would fall, uh, you wouldn't be able to stop very quickly. It was, uh, it was certainly a look. Um, in fact, the Hartford Whalers decided uh, the following year to also jump on board the trend. And so for the second year, it was the Flyers and the Whalers who could be seen on the ice wearing the Cooperall long pants. And after that season, just lasted two years after that season, the NHL banned them. Both teams had to go back to the traditional uh, knee-length hockey pant uh, with the socks. Uh, but 
what I love that the Flyers are doing this is that's kind of really embracing what the reverse retro is supposed to be all about. And it's embracing bits of each franchise's history. So the Flyers are going to wear those Cooperalls for warmups each of the games that they are wearing their reverse retro sweaters. And I think it's just a ton of fun. Do they look silly? Yes, but just a lot of fun. I like it. I've mentioned before, uh, if you would like to stay up to date with how the kids are doing down on the farm, so to speak, for the Montreal Canadiens. If you'd like to keep up to date and informed about everything going on with the Laval Rocket and the Habs prospects who are playing in the AHL, uh, then I highly uh, recommend that you follow at the AHL Report on Twitter. The Laval Rocket had a rough start to their season as well. They played a home and home last Friday and Saturday against the Belleville Senators, and they lost lost both of them. One of them they lost in overtime. That was the 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 uh, the home game on Friday night, the the season opener. Uh, and then they lost uh, again on Saturday night in Belleville. Um, it was it was a rough go of things. Uh, penalties really started to rack up for Laval uh, in both of those weekend games uh, and proved to be a, a bit of a, of a momentum killer for them. I will mention on Wednesday night, they returned home to uh, welcome the Springfield Thunderbirds into the building and Caden Primo uh, posted a shutout in that game. Uh, the Springfield Thunderbirds, of course, were the team who ousted Laval from the Calder Cup playoffs in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Final uh, earlier this summer. Caden Primo coming up with his first shutout of the season. Uh, Laval will now go on the road and play the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins on Friday night and then travel to Connecticut to take on the Bridgeport Islanders on Saturday night. And we'll have all of the information about that at ahlreport.com. Don't forget, after you tap that subscribe button and notification bell, uh, if you have any questions that you would like to toss into our All Habs mailbag uh, for me to answer on a future episode of the show, questions about the Canadians, about hockey in general, about the prospects, the Laval Rocket. Uh, drop a question about that in the comments down below. Always taking questions. If you've got questions, I will try to have answers for you. <laughs> so leave a, leave a question down below. Don't forget this week's feedback forum question is all about those reverse retros. What do you think of the Habs and their Expos themed uh, reverse retro jerseys? And uh, let me know if you like it, if you hate it, uh, what you think about it. Are you buying one? Uh, and uh, drop those in the comments down below. Hey, if, you, uh, if you're a Habs fan and you're out and about sporting your best Habs gear, don't forget to post a picture on Twitter or Facebook Facebook using the hashtag show your Habs. Uh, and last week I asked you, you know, hey, do you have any, it's it's the regular season now. Do you have a game day routine, something you do every single week or every single game uh, that you that's kind of a, a, a routine for you or a superstition? And Sam wrote in and said, mine is I mute the TV for the anthem and I play it by Roche Doucette. Uh, and I like that. Uh, thanks so much for writing in. If you happen to miss last week's show, check that out right here. And I'll see you again next week right here at All Habs Hockey Magazine.